Welcome back to CBSN and our continuing coverage of raids overnight in the Paris suburb of Saint Denis. Authorities say seven people have been arrested during the raid. Two people were killed over the course of that police operation, including a female suicide bomber who authorities say blew herself up. About 110 officers, more actually, took part in that operation, according to our Jonathan Vigliotti, who we spoke to a short time ago. Uh, and the reason that authorities were targeting that particular uh, apartment building in the suburb there uh, called Saint Denis is because they believed that the suspected mastermind of the Paris attacks on Friday. Uh, they believed he was there, that person's name, Abdel Hamid Abaoud. But right now, we do not know whether or not that person was one of the seven who were arrested. Joining us now on the phone is James Carafano. He is the Vice President of Foreign and Defense Policy Studies at the Heritage Foundation. And uh, thanks for being with us, James. I just want to get your take on the developments that happened overnight, first of all. This was a sweeping police operation targeting someone whom authorities had said they believed earlier had gone back to Syria. But now, based on information from witness statements and surveillance video, uh, led them to that apartment building. So this is really kind of takes your breath away. First of all, what happened in the attack in Paris is exactly the kind of attack that the French were worried about. It was exactly the kind of attack that the French were looking for. It was exactly the kind of attack that normally you pick up because it's so big and so complicated that something goes wrong or somebody slips or something that happens. So for, for that to get pulled off, that really takes your breath away. But now to find out that there's infrastructure that's still standing and that apparently there were resources and capabilities to do a subsequent attack, something that looks like, you know, almost a campaign. Boy, the magnitude of that threat and how French authorities kind of missed that, it, you just you just want to ask, you know, what, what's gone wrong here? Because, you know, in the United States, we stopped at least 74 terrorists. Well, we have at least 74 Islamists for the terror plots since 9 11. Most of them have been stopped, but most were stopped because we uncovered them before anybody did anything. So what do you think? What has gone wrong here? I think back to January after the Charlie Hebdo attacks and there were similar raids and uh, our correspondent John, Jonathan Vigliotti uh, talked about Said Dane and described it as one of those no-go zones, which I know was sort of a, a debated uh, phrase, but it, it described an area of the city that police uh, frankly didn't enter into, didn't police as well as they policed other areas. Now, several months later, it seems like not much has changed what do you think the what do you think the French government didn't do that they should have done between January and now? Oh, you know, I met with the French interior minister a couple of years ago, and I, I mean, I know the French are, are very focused on this issue. They're very worried about transnational terrorism. But again, it's just kind of a head scratcher. I mean, everybody that's been involved with this thing so far, these are the kind of people that you would expect. It, you know, it, it, they're not the unusual, they're not the unusual suspect. The methods that they use, the tactic that they use, the, the techniques that they're using to, to talk together and cooperate, these are all things that we see before, and they're all things that we're supposed to be looking for. So you know, how did something like this happen in the heart of, of, of a target? I mean, it's not like it's you know, some little town out of village out in the countryside that nobody had ever heard before. This is Paris is in every terrorist cross here, as is London, as is New York, as is D.C. and L.A., these these are the expected targets in the expected places, and they're still pulling them off. I, I, it just raises all kinds of questions about what the French are doing. James, I want to go back to something you said um, a moment ago about how it's baffling that the infrastructure, use the word infrastructure to describe uh, what it was that police were going after, um, that was still standing uh, despite... Uh, obviously the attacks that happened on Friday and the police activity since then. Um, I guess what I'm getting at, James, is what does the sweeping nature of this raid, the urgency with which it unfolded, what does that tell you about what perhaps these terrorists may have been planning next, the alleged terrorists? Well, well it, it, you know, the fact that, that one suspect blew himself up with a, with a vest because, well, they had more vests, right? And... And if they were sophisticated enough to do a simultaneous uh, attack in multiple spots, they're sophisticated enough to know that if you really want to maximize impact, you know, when you hit somebody like that, if you can come back and hit them again, that that really gets people's attention. So um, it, it, without, you know, knowing more, my, my assumption is, is they were going to do another hit. 
uh, just to make the point that it's not just a one-shot deal. And that's, that's the mark of a very, very serious terrorist campaign. So then, you know, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not this is an indication that ISIS is, has moved into a different phase in, in terms of their, uh, their campaign, that it's beyond a, 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 a geographic area, a caliphate in a sp with specific boundaries, that they've moved on to something else. Well, the, the evidence suggests that if you, if, you know, if you look at the bombings in Beirut, if you look at this incident, if you look at the attack of the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the Egypt airliner, and, it, and that's, I think that's predictable and expected. The notion that the caliphate was going to remain strong and resilient by just sitting there and, you know, taking endless bombing strikes and drone runs, I mean, if they wanted to be a caliphate to fulfill that narrative, they had to strike back. They had to go on the offensive. So I think this is something that serious people expected and predicted. James, uh, let me ask you what you think. We heard from the president of France, Francois Hollande, a short time ago. He was addressing a gathering of mayors, and he talked about, obviously, his strategy going forward, uh, taking uh, moves that would extend the state of emergency to three months. Uh, he's going to go to parliament to try and get that done. He also talked about the military action, sending the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier to help assist with the stepped-up military efforts against ISIS. Um, what is your take on what the French president, uh, the actions that the, the French are taking now uh, in the wake of these attacks, given what we saw, what we've seen, obviously, clearly intelligence failures leading up to this point? Well, you know, you know I think the offensive operations in, in Syria are, are, aren't going to be game-changing. I, I think that's just changing the tail numbers on people that are dropping bombs on stuff. But what they do domestically is very, very important because one of the things is, well, how could they do this raid if they didn't know anything about them, you know, before the attack? Now, all of a sudden, they're doing raids. Well, in, in counterterrorism operation, it's, it's very difficult to connect the dots when you don't know what dots to connect. But what happens in the wake of an attack is you, you start to put some dots together, and that enables you to go back and look at all the information you have, and now all of a sudden kind of seemingly random things that didn't make sense anymore. Now you can make connections. So now you can start following up on that and, and finding things. That's why what, what happens in the next couple of months is really important and vital. And, and, the, and you do have to be incredibly proactive and quick before those guys kind of move up and roll away. So the next three months in terms of figuring out how much more infrastructure there is, figuring out how many people are involved, figuring out how these guys did this, how you can prevent the future. That is really, really important, and that's when you really do need to be on top of your game. All right. Uh, James Carafano from the Heritage Foundation, thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thanks for having me.